in a good stance right here, flex my knees, and then I just make my first cut here. Then I make another cut down below, and make the third cut up here. This is not my favorite act for doing this. I left it at the house. I am a water protector. If you remember the last year, we were at Cannonball protecting our water rights, which were stolen from us. I'll speak very plain about it. I'm still suffering from the effects of being sprayed with urine, feces, and rat poison. That's how they tried to steal us and kill us. I'm probably going to try to join this group because I've got a very different set of skills. In 1996, I was one of the few people that was authorized by the United Nations to go to Bosnia and Herzegovina and hunt down Mokovic, who was doing ethnic cleansing. We were allowed to hunt down his death squads. I saw society break down to its lowest level. And I see the same pattern that was there starting here. The thing I missed the most would probably be the solitude. Uh, you know, a lot of people didn't like being by themselves, but I enjoyed that part of it, and the isolation and the silence. You know, it, was, it was really peaceful. Uh, I had a good, nice, cushy bed to sleep in inside my shelter, and uh, I haven't slept well since, actually. And people ask me, what was the hardest part of the whole experience? And I always say, coming home, coming back. Because when you live at that base of a level and everything is boiled down to its essence, and you meet your own needs, you're, you know, you're back to the normal rhythms of life, and you don't have all of this noise and distraction. And then the next day when you come out, you're back to all of this, it's striking how out of balance our modern lives are. And, uh, you know, I came back from a situation where I had some bottles that had washed up that I repurposed into fish traps, and they were feeding me every single day. They performed better than any trap I had out there. And then I come home and I see us throwing away one trash bag for a household of five people. We're going through one bag of trash nearly daily, and most of it just packaging and things. But I'm thinking I could repurpose all of this and actually sustain my life on it. So we're really out of balance. You know, humans are the only thing in nature that won't stay in their lane. Like if you look at a bear 500 years ago and a bear today, there really is no difference. You can count on bears to do bear stuff. They're gonna act like a bear. But you look at humans over, the, over say, the last 100 years, I think we could all agree that we have devolved. We've forgotten how to live in our native habitat, which is out here on the land. And most people can't meet their basic needs anymore. And so that's that's kind of what propels me to teach and uh, work with the youth is to reconnect them. And it doesn't matter what your background is, if it's Native American, if you're African, Chinese, it doesn't matter. Your ancestors did this stuff. We all did fire by friction. We all broke rocks and used them for tools. We all used plants. We all used animals and built our own shelters. So ultimately it's about reconnecting with what it means to be a human on the planet Earth at its most base level, inside your heart, your mind, and with your hands, apart from all of this artificiality that we have. Because our our modern lives are pretty precarious. We're kind of on this razor's edge where our supply and logistics are just so right on time and extended and fragile that if that were to be disrupted, or say we couldn't get petrol to fuel the vehicles, you know, it. It's a thin veneer, and if it gets scraped off, we're, we're, we're back to 100 years ago pretty quickly. So I think these skills are all of our birthright, and we should all try to recapture some of that. But, uh, so I climbed a mountain kind of to, uh, to honor the 22 veterans a day that commit suicide. Yeah, I, I didn't really want you to clap, but um, you know, it, it wasn't a, it wasn't about me. You know, it was it was something I had one one chance to actually be able to to reach some people. 
And um, so that was the high point of uh, being out there. The high point of the entire process was after that aired, um, all the people that got a hold of me and told me that they needed that. And, you know, to be able to, to go do something that was probably stupid, um, but to have, to have multiple people, um, I, I haven't counted them up, but I, I would say that it's well over 50, um, you know, reach out to me and say that that, that touched them in some sort of way. Um, that's that's probably been the high point of my life, quite honestly. Um, other than other than finding out we're pregnant. <laughs> About 15 years ago, I started flint napping, and I kind of had a knack for it. I got pretty good at it, and uh, that's what I've been doing with pretty much all my spare time: is going to events like this and um, making this, selling my art, demonstrating this craft. Uh, I almost feel like a torchbearer in some ways to uh, keep this art alive because in so many ways it is a, uh, a lost art. Uh, because of that, Discovery Channel contacted us in 2015 and asked if we wanted to be on a television show. Uh, at the time, it seemed like a good idea until they told us we were going uh, seven degrees above the Arctic Circle in Sydney Island, Norway. The most important thing you can learn to do is to drive a flake. And I'll just demonstrate that right now. Uh, everybody wants to make an arrowhead. And an arrowhead is only good to you if you know how to make an arrow. And an arrow is only good to you if you know how to use a bow. And a bow is only going to happen if you know how to woodwork and if you have a tool. And how are you going to do that? You're going to use something like this. Uh, this edge right here, as it breaks, that's what you would use as a plane. That being said, if you're not skilled, if you're not a skilled archer, if you're not practicing every day, then making an arrow, making a bow, that's, that I, you, you can't expect to do anything with that. So ultimately when, when it comes down to flint napping, the most important thing that you want is a nice usable flake because that cutting edge That's your knife. 